Hello everybody and welcome back again. I am going to start this off a little bit different than what I did before and how I am going to do that is I am going to uh, go over a couple of things that I wanted to uh, bring up before and I uh, I kind of went over it, but it's really important, and it really needs to be uh, discussed a little bit better than what it was, in my opinion. So, I am going to uh, first go over the filing system that I discussed about how to set up a filing system for my streams and, and things of that nature. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, like I said, you can do this any way that you want to. And, uh, you know, I know that a lot of people have a lot of different approaches, but this is basically what works with me. So, the reason why I do it like this is because with these files, okay, the longer or the more that you add to the files, the bigger they get and the bulkier it gets eventually you got so much information on those files that if it just ends up crashing on you and it'll crash repeatedly on you over and over again so what I did is I broke down my blender files into segments and I wanted to go over that with you so that you guys could kind of get an understanding of what I'm talking about now um, in my document section I set up a, a filing system and I, I named it uh, blend files now these are my blend files right here and as, as you can see if you can see it I'm sorry if you can't but I have one for gaming with infamous which is my gaming channel room for strange stories which is not for gaming it's for like strange stories and ufos and ghosts and stuff like that then i also have a folder for my templates which i use at the beginning or ending and sometimes in my nuts locks and stuff for retro games and things like that um, then i have a folder set up just for my textures and simulations now I also have a channel that I call the Praetorian which is about current events, history, like ancient history, uh, modern history, stuff like that. And I have the Storyteller which is just basically telling stories and everything like that. Well then you go on and you have what I, I'm basically going to have for this is it's just working with audio and video. Now what I've done is I've gone in and I have set up uh, blend files that go along with each and every one of these for my uh, gaming with Infamous. I have the Sora's Wrath, Call of Duty, Control, and each of these settings are set up according to each of those games. So it has the intro in it, it has the video ed edit and how long I want each video to be plus it has uh, the changes that I want in the uh, the scaling and stuff on the video you know what I mean and the resolution settings are all set up and ready to go according to that game um, now what I did is I set up a blend file for that and you, if you see here I've even got folders for just my retro games, my RPGs, Elder Scrolls and Warhammer. Um, in my Elder Scrolls these are different kinds like Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Lore and Elder Scrolls Online. So I have each of those with their own separate blend files. Alright. Now that is one example that I wanted to point out that I do personally. Now you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but that's what I do. So after that, I'd like to also point out 
the fact that I do my videos on OBS. So on OBS, I uh, record the video and I put those videos into another file folder file system or another folder but this is in my videos okay and I named that um, unedited videos so in unedited videos I, if you look here I've got gaming with infinite infamous strange stories and the Praetorian go into my gaming with infamous I have 24 7 live TV watch you know with Roger Hansen and that's something I'm trying to do on mines right now then I have my new games and then I have my old games with all the unedited videos that I've done with OBS this is my retro games and these are my RPG games with Dungeons and Dragons Palladium and White Wolf so I have those all set up and organized then I have my strange stories then I have Praetorian now I do this with all of my videos now and I keep them filed I usually don't save the unedited ones I used to but I notice that it does bog down the system so I stop doing that once I have them edited and everything I just leave them alone um, I can go into my unedited videos go to gaming and then new ones and you can see that this is what it looks like so I've got those those are what needs to be edited so after I do that I go and I take those videos and I put them into my video editing uh, on blender and once I'm done editing them I put them in this file system and this is my edited videos and inside of my edited videos I have my captures I have my gaming with infamous intros and outros okay which goes at the beginning and at the end of every video new games older games retro games RPG games then my d and so forth like I did with my editing but these are finished now inside of each of these like here I have my ancient history I have ancient Egypt ancient Near East background videos which is the background videos that goes with those narrations which is my audio and I'll go over audio later on too by the way then I have my Greek uh, history I've started my live stream videos and then my Phoenician theology. Now inside of here you'll notice that I have a folder and it says already used video files. These are the ones that I want to keep and I want to store. So I have those in there and eventually whenever I get all of this done I transfer these over to an external hard drive for later use. Um, now I do this right here in order to make it to where my uh, videos or my blend files don't become over overbearing where whenever I go to start it up the blend file just doesn't crash and <coughs> it works out this way you don't have to do it this way it's just you know that's the way I do it and before I go further this is something I wanted to say as well um, I'm not doing these videos to make money off of them I'm not trying to I'm trying to keep it as casual as I can because I'm not really wanting to make this out to be like some kind of a tutorial I'm just showing you how I do things with blender um, there's a few people that I know who are trying to get into this and try to make their own videos and do a good job at it and you know the more help they can get the better they can so I, I've given it I gave this up a while ago but since then I've learned a little bit more 
So I figured I'd come back in and I'd try to go through and show people how I use at least the video editing in Blender so that it makes it easier for them too. And it is a lot easier once you figure out the configurations, learn some tricks, things like that. So this is basically my filing system. This is how I usually get my stuff done on here. Um, and it does actually help out pretty good so um, I wanted to go back through that and let people know that this is how I, I do it you know and not too many people do uh, do it this way a lot of them rely mostly on the blend files to save all their stuff um, but you have to have these files uh, the raw video files on the unedited stuff in the first place and just so you know when you start using the blender and you start editing it doesn't destroy any of the information on the original video so be aware of that I mean it, it's completely there and like I said I used to keep those but then finally I realized that it bogs down on memory so I had to start getting rid of the old unedited edited videos but I still keep the edited videos on in reserves for just in case um, I wanted to mention that and then there was also something else that I wanted to go over um, let me go ahead and get this set up to where I have it ready for you guys now <coughs> earlier I used uh, um, Saints Row the third as an example and it was fine for that point but it also had uh, it had it, it was recorded badly there was uh, mess ups in the uh, recording the audio was off and stuff like that so what I want to do is I want to find another video that I could put on there so that you guys can see what I was talking about in my earlier video about different frames per second and set setups like that so let me get a uh, get back on my 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 blender if I can find it <laughs> trying to switch it around and uh, we can we can set that up real quick uh, But I can probably find it. It's just going to take me a second. Uh. Oh, sorry about that. when I uh, find that I will continue with it and I'm going to use a here we go all right um, and I'm going to use a um, a different video so that we can go through it and you can see what I was talking about there because this is also something that's very important that you have to know and it goes with um, the resolution the frames per second and stuff like that so let me come on here and up here on the top right hand side where it says resolution in format up on the top corner it says format and then it has resolution X, resolution Y. I have it set at 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. And then the percentage is 100%. Now, I wanted to go back over that and point something out too, okay? 
when I said earlier that if you want better resolution put it at 100 that doesn't always apply because um, if you have a computer that's not very strong um, if, y if you put it on 50 percent it will actually make it run easier on your computer now blender has changed since 2.8 I'll put it to that way at 2.8 it was pretty manageable with a quad core computer which is what I had at the time but they upgraded stuff after 2.8 which made it to where I couldn't get on here and do even halfway a halfway decent job in editing videos even with a quad core computer so I had to learn how to adjust for a little while and how I did it is I set the percentage down to 50% and I left it at that and it it did do my videos the way I needed them so if you have a weaker computer then I suggest you can do that now if you have a stronger one that has maybe uh, eight cores an eight core CPU with a GPU set it at 100 percent and keep uh, keep your quality and everything down here at high quality like like I've got it right there nothing wrong with all that up here if you want to use uh, H.264 it's perfectly fine I used uh, MPE MPEG 4 the last time on the video and um, like I said uh, if you want to use H.264 that's perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with it it's it's a pretty good system really um, I've found no difference between the two other than the fact that uh, OBS tries to discourage people from using it and I believe the reason why they're doing that is because they're trying to endorse MKV video files as well as AVI because they're an open source but I've found no issues whatsoever when it comes to using MP4s and if you've used OBS you know what I'm talking about they give you that little line of, that warns you so now I've got this set at 30 frames per second okay and um, I am going to go in and pull a video that I know the audio works good at and before I do that though I want to set this to 60 frames per second so that you guys can see what I was showing you the last time so up here in frame rate I went and I clicked on it and in the d down drop options or drop options I went from 30 which is right here to 60 over here at the bottom where the sequencer is you'll see view select marker add strip and image I'm gonna click on add and then I'm gonna add movie then this selection is gonna come up I'm going to click on gaming with infamous go to uh, well actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna come over here to videos so you guys can see what I'm talking about down here on system go down to videos go to unedited videos <coughs> gaming with infamous new game and I am going to add in dying light part 7 so here it is we got dying light part 7 right there so and I still have to edit this but this is what I wanted to show you I videotaped it in 60 frames no, 30 frames, I'm sorry. But, I'm going to put this back up here on the frame rate at 30. And then I'm going to, well, it's actually working. The newer one does this sometimes. It doesn't mess up like that. But, before I say that, I want to test the audio to make sure that it's all matching up. So, let's go in and check the audio out.
sure at that point if it's working or not. So sometimes it actually works out, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I gotta find another one where it'll actually show what I'm talking about. So go in here, click on, go to add, click on mo add, hit movies, go to videos, and hit um, unedited, I'll go to strange videos, add that one. scroll with my mouse well that's take my middle mouse button and scroll in until it comes into view stretch it out by hitting that button that right here at the bottom the scroller and then I want to switch it over from 30 to 60 so that you guys can see this. Oh, it's actually working. That's weird. Well, anyhow, before what would happen is it would be off and I would have to adjust the video with the audio and then after that I'd come up here to add, go down the effect strip hit sp select speed control on the options here and the green strip would appear above this the blue one is the video the green one down below is the audio and this is your speed strip and that would adjust the speed of the video to where it matches up with the audio which it doesn't really have any audio on that one but you kind of see what I'm talking about right there. So yeah, so basically this has been more or less a review of everything that I've gone over. Um, I'm not going to end it there either. I'm going to go ahead and go over some stuff too that I was talking about in the actual editing. Now, I'm going to add a movie. So I come up here to the top of the sequencer, next to view, select marker, and add. I select add, add movie. Now on the right hand side where it says system, I can go in here and I can pick through the filing system. In the document section, downloads, music, pictures, videos, and so forth. Or I can pick them here by selecting this up arrow or the back arrow or the side arrow or I can create a new directory um, I can also refresh the file list so instead of doing this though I'm going to come over here to videos and I'm going to select uh, edited videos or no unedited and I will come to gaming with infamous I will come in here and I will pick Saints Row again, but instead of Saints Row the third, I will pick Saints Row two. I will get the first video, put it on here. Scroll out with my middle uh, mouse uh, wheel, and do that until I see as much of the video as I possibly can if that doesn't work I come down here to this little tab at the bottom where that button is I hold down on my left button and I move right with it and it will adjust until I see it now both of these files are highlighted so with them both highlighted I don't touch anything except for the G button. I make sure that the uh, letters on the right at the beginning of the strip is at one or 
are matching and then the ones on the left I want to make sure that they are at one and they're both saying one that means that the video and the audio are in sync after that I click on the left button again I scroll back in I take this scroller at the bottom and I move it to the beginning I have this set for 15 minutes now the video itself is at 30 frames right here so I don't know if this would actually do what I was wanting it to do let me find out real quick switch this around to 60 frames let's see what happens it's still matching up that's pretty good it started doing that whenever they came with it, with the new versions so that is a pretty good thing but I'm going to go ahead and set this back at 30 the way it was because that's the original resolution it was in and the reason why I wanted to show it to you is because in the older versions that was an issue that you had to use and you had to use your uh, effect strips come up here to speed control and add it to it to where it would sync the audio and video together but apparently that's been modified and fixed which is good um, now I'll go through the basics with you you uh, this is I, I call it a, a cursor I don't know the pro proper name for it the sequence slide maybe yeah it could be the sequence slide no it's not this down here is what I was talking about but uh, right here this is my little cursor it goes all the way through now if I want to adjust this to where it fits up perfectly with the edges uh, of the scene I come here I click on the blue strip which is the video and then over to the right in the transform section on the right hand side under the strip tab always make sure that this is on the strip tab the top one to the far left there you got tabs one says strip one says tool one says modifier and one says proxy make sure it's on the strip one go down to transform which is the second option down here where it says scale X and then Y underneath it you select the X section and if you go to the right on this button you can bring the video out if you go left it brings it in now on the Y section if you go to the right it brings it up and down if you go to the left it goes inwards up and down now up and down it'll go uh, uh, outwards if you go on the right hand side that's what the way I should have really said it now what I want to do is I want to match this up make sure that the edge right there shows those little gritty parts now on the top and bottom the way this is all set up it doesn't look or it doesn't really um, it's not too reliable so what I'll do is I will come to this scene right here and I'll look at it and that is actually a better example so let me see how much of this actually needs to be edited so I turn around and use the Y 
to the right and left to adjust it to the best ability that I can. Then I go up here to the X and I use the left and the right and I adjust it there too. And that is how you adjust your video. Now, if I don't want all that black on the top and bottom to be there, I can just zoom it in to get rid of it. Or I could just leave it the way it is and let it look like this. A cutscenes basically where it shows the storyline. If you notice there's that little black right there. So what I do is I come here to the Y or no to the X actually. No, it is the Y. And I tap it once and that'll be gone when I do the render. And it'll make a vid the video smoother. So I've got that covered. Now, in order for me to highlight both of these, I can do one of two things. I can do like I've been showing you. I could hold down on the right click button or the left click button. And I can drag the mouse down, creating that little square or, yeah, square like uh, ring. And I can put it over the top of both of them. I can highlight it like that but I'm going to click on here to where they all uh, go unhighlighted and I can show you another way. Now I can do it another way. I can go ahead and hit A which is select all and it can do that. Now that's only if those are the only two strips on there though. So I only do that if there's only those two strips. <coughs> now I have both the audio and the video selected and what I want to do is I want to cut that. So in order to cut that uh, video, I select the K button and I click on it. Now, since the mouse was on the right hand side, everything to the right of the cursor, the blue cursor right here is highlighted. Everything to the left is not highlighted. I can hit uh, Control Z to undo anything that I've made mistakes on so I hit control Z to undo that cut I move the mouse over to the left side I hit K and as you see the highlight is on the left side now instead of the right so that's the way you can do your uh, cutting now say I want to take and I want to move both of these out of the scene what I do after that is I select, keep both of those selected, and I hit the G button. Now I don't want to put it in any specific place, so I don't hit X and I don't hit Y to keep them straight. Since they're both selected and they're both perfect and perfectly in sync, I can just move my mouse wherever I want to put it and it will go there. Now if I don't want to do that all I gotta do is right click and it will go back to where it was. Well almost back to where it was. Now if I want to bring that down to the first row with the rest of the strip I hit G and I hit Y and now you see there's a yellow line over by the one and that will make sure that it goes just up and down without moving to the left or to the right. Bring it down and it fits right in there perfectly. Now to make sure there's no gaps I can hold down on the left directional arrow and it will go backwards and as you can see there is no gaps. Whenever you see the white that's around the video up on top on the preview that means that the cursor is above the highlighted 
area that you've got selected when it's not on the highlighted that will disappear so you don't see any empty space there so you can know that it's perfectly selected alright so I showed you that now I'm wanting to select this area right here by holding down on the left click button and highlighting both of the both the audio and video and I'm going to show you something that I do and you can use this with clipping or without clipping um, so um, or um, not clipping but uh, snapping snapping is up here which is a very useful tool but sometimes you do have to turn it off and on so just be aware of that but here's a trick that I've done and really I don't have to do it but I still do it as a habit I hit G with it selected and then I hit X and I drag it over the top of the other clip and it will automatically snap at the beginning and it always makes sure that it goes right back to the thing so I can show you an example I'm going to turn the snapping off and I can hit G then the X and then move my mouse over the top until that entire strip turns red let it go and you'll see what I'm saying that's with or without snapping on no gaps so I believe I've covered everything over again and to kind of go over some of the stuff that I was uh, doing before and later on I will come back with another video to go even further with it but this is basically what I've done so far and I'm wanting or I'm reviewing it I hope it's helpful to you guys and if you do like it you know freaking and it's helping you then let me know and, and I'd love to hear if it's helping you or not and if you have any questions feel free to leave a question in the comment section and I can get back to you